Hi friends, welcome to my another video. This video is a second part of star delta starter concept. In my first video, I have discussed about the basic concept of star delta starter. In that video, there was one question arises that why the induction motor taking high inverse current at the time of starting. This video will cover the reason, the concept behind the high inverse current at the time of starting of induction motor. If you didn't watch, my part 1 video on star delta starter concept then I will recommend you to watch first the part to have a clear understanding of the concept which I will explain in the part 2 video. Okay, to understand the concept behind why the induction motor taking high inverse current at the time of starting we have to understand two things. First, the working principle of induction motor and second the construction of induction motor when we will understand this two concept then we can understand the concept behind the high inverse current at the time of starting of induction motor induction motor working on the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction what this faraday's law state we will discuss here and then we will deeply understand the law the first law of faraday is stated that Whenever the conductor is placed in a varying magnetic field, an electromotive force is induced. Likewise, if the conductor circuit is closed, a current is induced, which is called the induced current. And the second law states that the induced EMF in a coil is equal to the rate of change of the flux linkage. What does it mean? Let us understand this through an animation video. In order to understand the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, let us take a copper made coil and a galvanometer and connect this galvanometer with the copper coil in same arrangement. As this arrangement is free from the electrical connection, so there will be no deflection in the galvanometer. But once we insert the magnetic bar towards the coil then there you will find a deflection in the galvanometer and as when you move the magnet back from the coil then you will also find the deflection in the galvanometer but this time the deflection will be in opposite direction from the second case and when you will change the direction of the magnet that is from north to south then also we will find the deflection in the galvanometer but this time the deflection in the galvanometer will be opposite from the first case experiment even if you will move the coil with respect to magnet then also you will find the deflection in the coil but when you will hold the magnet without giving any movement to the magnet and coil then you will find no deflection in the galvanometer from this experiment we notice that when there is a relative motion between the magnet and coil there is a deflection in the galvanometer there is a deflection in the galvanometer because it's sensing the current in the coil. So we can say that when there is a relative motion between the magnet and coil, there is an induced EMF and induced current in the coil. And we also notice here that when there is no relative motion between the magnet and coil, there is no deflection in the galvanometer. We can say in another way that when there is no relative motion between the coil and the magnet then there is no induced EMF and no current, no induced current in the coil. As we know that the magnetic bar have its magnetic field due to its magnetic fluxes. Okay, so what is actually happening is when we are moving the magnetic bar towards or away from the coil there is induced EMF in the coil and due to this induced EMF there is induced current in the coil but when we will hold the magnet without giving any motion with respect to coil then the magnetic flux of that magnet is linking with the coil but there is no changes occurring in the magnetic flux linkage with the coil and due to that there is no deflection in the galvanometer it means that there is no induced EMF, no induced current in the coil. So from this experiment, we can conclude that 
when there is a change in the magnetic flux linking to the coil there is induced emf and induced current in the coil but when there is no change in the magnetic flux linkage with the coil there is no induced emf no induced current in the coil what does it mean suppose the magnet has no motion with respect to the solenoid or the coil but the magnetic flux of this magnet is linking with the solenoid or the coil the magnetic flux is linking but there is no deflection in the galvanometer why because the magnetic flux which is linking to the coil is not changing with respect to time when we will give motion to the magnetic magnet bar then the magnetic link the magnetic flux which is linking to the coil will change with respect to time and due to this there will be deflection in the galvanometer so we can say that only with the linking of magnetic flux with the coil there will be no induced emf and no induced current in the coil but when the same magnetic field will change but when the same magnetic flux which is linking to the coil is changing with respect to time then there will be a mag then there will be the induced emf and induced current in the coil the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction state that when there is a change of magnetic field with respect to time then there will be the induced emf and induced current in the coil the second law state that the amount of induced emf or induced current in the coil is directly proportional to the rate of change of the flux with the coil i hope you clearly understand the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction which is the principle of induction motor now let us understand what is the construction of the induction motor induction motor have stators and the rotor stator have the stator winding and the rotor will have the in ring and the rotor bars these all rotor bar is shorted by the in rings you can see here as the motor have two important part that is the stator which is a stationary part and the rotor which is a rotating part of the motor when we will give input supply to the stator winding the stator winding will produce the rotating magnetic field as there is a rotating magnetic field developed in the stator winding due to the three phase power supply this rotating magnetic field will cut the rotor bar and as per the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction there will be the induced emf in the rotor bar as the rotor bar are short circuited by the in ring there will be the induced current in the rotor bar this induced current which is developed in the rotor bar will oppose the cause of inducing it as per the lorentz law the cause of inducing the current in the rotor bar is the rate of change of flux with the rotor bar so the rotor will feel torque to rotate it at the time of starting you can notice that the rotating magnetic field is rotating with the synchronous speed but the rotor bar is in the standstill position so at the time of starting there will be the maximum flux linkage with the rotor bar which will produce the maximum induced emf and induced current in the rotor bar but once the rotor start rotating the magnetic flux linkage with the rotor bar will be normal and there will be the normal induced emf and normal induced current in the rotor as the motor stator winding and the rotor is coupled with the transformer action so when there will be the high induced emf in the rotors bar then the motor will draw high inverse current at the time of starting but once the rotor start rotating the induced emf and the induced current in the rotor bar will be normal then at the running condition motor will take only take rated current so we can conclude here that at the time of starting the rotor is in the standstill position and the rotating magnetic field cutting the rotor bar at maximum so there will be the maximum induced emf and induced current in the rotor bar as the rotor and stator is coupled with the transformer action so due to the high induced emf at the time of starting the stator winding also take 
high inverse current at the time of starting but once the rotor start rotating then the linkage of the flux with the rotor bar will become normal so the induced emf and induced current in the rotor bar also become normal as this rotor and stator winding is coupled with the transformer action so during running the stator winding take only the rated current i hope you got the concept that why there is a high inverse current at the time of starting of three phase induction motor which was the motto of our this video in the next part of the star delta starter concept we will discuss how the star delta starter convert the motor winding first into the delta configuration at the time of starting and how the star and delta starter will change the motor winding into the delta configuration during running time if you like my video please give thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and share with your friend we will meet in any other video till then take care keep learning and bye bye thank you so much